Live from downtown Bakersfield, 2380C News at 6 starts now. Good evening. The old saying, there's nothing to do in Bakersfield, increasingly becoming a phrase of the past as a new state-of-the-art sports complex coming to Bakersfield this fall. Today, organizers inviting the public to tour that building off Buck Owens Boulevard and Gilmore Avenue. 23ABC's Bayon Wang joins us in studio with more on the upcoming facility. Bayon. Yeah, Tim and Jess, the facility will be owned and managed by Game Day Sports Academy, which is a team of several nonprofit organizations. And they said their hope is not only to assist Kern County youth excel in sports, but in academics and leadership as well. I want to be in the NBA, be like Stephen Curry. I love the game of basketball. Like, it's literally my life. I go from school and basketball. I'm in the gym 24 7. The sports complex coming to Bakersfield is looking to make history in Kern County. The first indoor multi-sports complex, which you all will come to know as Dignity Health Sports Complex. Dignity Health is sponsoring the project launched by Game Day Sports Academy, which will include indoor collegiate basketball, volleyball, and futsal courts, along with two weight rooms. But organizers say their facility is more than just a place to play sports and exercise. We offer after school programs and development for children for growth, for mentoring, for skills development as well. Right, A lot of times student athletes will get to the point where they're being recruited in college and they don't have the correct assistance. So we're just that third eye kind of looking over them and making sure that they get to where they need to go. Seven year old Isaiah Welsh said he just can't wait for the project to finish. This place is big that I love it so much. I can feel like I can just be a kid, get all that energy out. And once I go home, I can just chillax. And Game Name Sports Academy said the facility should be complete by October and that participants would pay a membership fee. They didn't specify how much, but said it would be affordable. And for more information about this sports complex, head to our website, turn to 23.com. In studio, Bayon Wing, 23ABC, connecting you. All right, Bion, thanks for that. And since the new Dignity Sports Complex will be taking over the old location of Trackhouse Go-Kart Racing, Trackhouse is now under new ownership and is relocating to a new location in Oildale. According to the new owners, Trackhouse will now be Captain Jack's Family Fun Center. The center will feature an arcade laser maze, a virtual reality experience, and go-kart racing. The owners say they are now located next to Respawn Laser Tag at 1901 Mineral Court. Owners say they'll be partnering with the laser or tag in, um, on specials and events as well. The phone number is staying the same, but the owner says their website address will be changing as soon as the web designer can finish transferring everything over. Captain Jacks is set to open on July 25th. An update now on a crash that happened this morning, knocking out power to some residents in Southwest Bakersfield. Power has been restored. The intersection reopened early this morning. Emergency crews along with PG and E cleaning up the accident at the intersection there. CHP officials say a big rig collided with a power pole at the corner of Stockdale Highway and Nord Avenue. The crash knocked down lanes, uh, lines across the lanes of traffic there. Traffic lights out at Stockdale and Heath. The driver of the big rig complained of pain. No major injuries, though. Several other vehicles ran through the debris field as well. That entire intersection blocked off more than 150 homes in the area without power, though power has since been restored. Well, we are tracking sunny and stable conditions on the West Coast, but that is not the case just to the east. We are tracking some remnants actually from Barry. So you can see in the areas near uh, Tennessee, there is some cooler temperatures due to rainfall, but we are tracking the heat just to the west in Missouri, as well as over in Texas and Oklahoma and some areas going to be reaching the triple digits, the Carolinas and even the 90s in Washington, D.C. So it is going to be a hot next few days, but that's really not going to be the case for us here in Kern County. So we are seeing those clear blue skies, but temperatures right on track with seasonal this afternoon. 97 degrees right now here in Bakersfield, but still looking at the triple digits in Ridgecrest as well as in China Lake. But as we plan our evening, well, it's still going to be warm in those 80s by the time midnight rolls around, but temperatures will be warming up quickly tomorrow. 10 AM 85 degrees, but temperatures right on track exactly what we were seeing today is what you can expect for your Thursday, but then a slight cool down on the way. I'll let you know when you can be expecting that coming up next.
Today, small businesses impacted by the thousands of earthquakes that have rocked the Ridgecrest area recently got the chance to learn about programs designed to help them pick up the pieces. The Small Business Development Center hosted a webinar at Cal State Bakersfield. The webinar is designed to help small businesses learn about the programs available to help them get back on their feet in the wake of the quakes. The webinar featured information on physical damages, loss of revenue, and more. Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman will spend the rest of his life in federal prison a judge Wednesday also ordering Guzman to surrender billions of dollars. ABC's Maggie Ruley has the details on the sentencing that authorities say makes America safer. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman will now spend the rest of his life behind bars. The long road that led Chapo Guzman from the mountains of Sinaloa to the courthouse behind us today was paved with death, drugs and destruction but it ended today with justice. The notorious drug lord sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole plus 30 years. It means that never again will Guzman pour poison over our borders, making billions while innocent lives are lost to drug violence and drug addiction. This after the 62 year old was convicted in February on 10 counts, including drug trafficking and conspiracy to commit murder. During the 10 week federal trial, the prosecution presented evidence that Guzman ordered the murders or in some instances personally tortured and murdered 26 people. And he organized the trafficking of multi tons of cocaine from South America into the U.S. There wouldn't be a, a sentence that's stiff enough. Um, to be honest with you, I'm just glad it's over and it's been a long time coming. Guzman, who infamously escaped prison twice in Mexico, spoke for about 10 minutes in court, mostly slamming the conditions of his jail cell in New York. His lawyers call the whole thing a show trial. I'm not here to tell you that Joaquin Guzman is a saint, and no matter what you think of Joaquin Guzman, he still deserves a fair trial. But the prosecution calls it justice for the people of Mexico and America. Today's trial is likely the last time we'll see El Chapo in public before he heads to Colorado to spend the rest of his life in a supermax prison. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. Coming up in sports, Bakersfield is playing host to some Aussies on the baseball diamond. We'll find out what these players are picking up from international competition. And Lion King fans getting ready for a big premiere this Friday of a new film. We'll take a look back at the original Disney classic and its impact so many years later. Allison. And winds across Kern County will be decreasing overnight. I'll let you know what that means for air quality later this week. Coming up next. Welcome back to 23 ABC Sports. They came from down under to play some baseball right here in Bakersfield. An 18U Australian team is making a trip down the West Coast with a pit stop here in town, playing a few local teams made up of high school players over at CSUB as part of the World Baseball Showcases. It's a unique experience for the Aussies, but also for the runners as they keep an eye on some potential international talent. Assistant CSUB coach said, baseball is baseball wherever you play, so there's nothing really different to expect on the field. But the local players have had a chance to learn some Aussie slang while building relationships with the Colts. Just being on the field and, you know, the, you go hit a double and then you're talking to the shortstop over there and he's got this, this funny accent you never heard before. Uh, I think just kind of building relationships, I mean, that's pretty much what baseball is all about. Well, we just had a kid on, our, on a recruiting chip uh, this weekend. He kept saying heaps. It means a lot. We got, we got heaps, of, heaps of ball players out there. <laughs> nice job, Coach Johnson. And he also mentioned the high energy and fun that the Aussies bring to the baseball field. And the American accents, they may be rubbing off on some of the Colts ball players with all that time they spent here in the States. Great job, guys. Um, Great job, guys. Come on, Liam, get yourself a hit now. Is that good? <laughs> An A for effort there for Blake. We had some fun with him last night having him mic'd up, but we'll catch up with some of the Bakersfield players tonight at 11. 
Well, just a day after the Condors signed defenseman Jake Kulovich and forward Jacob Stuckel to American Hockey League contracts, they're adding two more names to the roster, today signing some new names to some deals. Right winger Anthony Peluso signs a one-year deal, a professional vet, but new to the Condors. He spent or played over 200 games in the American Hockey League and 148 in the NHL with stints on three different professional teams. Playing in the American Hockey League with Stockton most recently, the Condors also signed defenseman Vincent Dar who played four seasons at Providence College, who was recently drafted by Edmonton in the seventh round. 183rd overall, he totaled 29 points during his collegiate career. Well, welcome to Condors Town, you two. Memorial Stadium is getting a facelift this month as Bakersfield College adds new artificial turf to their football field. And with turf come some benefits and some challenges, but for now, the Renegade football team is looking forward to playing on their new look field. Well, so far it's been all positive reactions and excitement and energy. It's already energy because they're getting ready to start their football season, but then to see all the work and the, the new field going in, it's just beautiful. And so, so far it's been ex you know, exceptionally positive. And of course, guys, we're excited for football field. We've already talked about that field. It looks great. We're going to have a little bit more on that later at 11. But again, turf, I'm going to say in Bakersfield, turf gets hot. It so does. that's what I am wondering yeah. how the players are going to play. But maybe you'll uh, we'll make them run faster, you know? There you go. The aesthetic yeah. is gorgeous. They don't yeah. want to fall down as much. It's yeah. an yeah. incentive to <laughs> yes. stay on your feet. There you go. And it looks exactly. great. So. Okay, thanks for that. <laughs> well, Disney's modern retelling of The Lion King heads to theaters this weekend. And Rick Damagella talking with the directors of the original Lion King about their film and how it informed the new film hitting theaters Friday. Before it was a CGI animated film, The Lion King roared in traditional animated form, winning two Academy Awards, including Best Original Song for Can You Feel the Love Tonight? The directors of the 1994 movie are curious how the new movie will turn out. How will it feel different? How will it, how will it be changed? How will it be the same? Yeah. You know, I mean, the story has been around a while. People are a little familiar with it. But in, in different hands, of course, it's going to feel differently. When we talked to John Favreau about it, it was interesting because he said as he was going through the process and trying to figure out where it could be different and where it needed to be the same, uh, he said they did uh, Pride Rock, a shot of Pride Rock, but it was facing the other direction. And they put it up, and, and he said everyone in the crew went, no, 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 <laughs> no that's wrong. It's supposed to face the other way. It's interesting and so they because switched we it. had a lot of discussion in the studio when we made the movie, which way the was shot. the right way. So clearly there is a right <laughs> the duo recall how James Earl Jones prepared for recording sessions. The funniest thing was is that whenever he would get in front of the microphone, he would do a warm-up exercise, which was kind of hilarious. But what's spectacular and kind of almost unbelievable is that he's still working 25 years later doing the same role. I mean, that's just yeah. unbelievable. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Yeah, his voice just wow. makes it, and the fact that he's still doing that is right. incredible. Right, it's iconic. All right, well, let's go ahead and bring in 23 ABC's Allison Garguero. Talk about our weather forecast. Pretty comfortable for this time in July. I know, can you believe it? And this time last year, temperatures were well into the triple digits, but we aren't going to be seeing that for at least the next several days. But mostly clear skies here in Bakersfield. A few high thin clouds rolling in over the mountains. But today, temperatures were just one degree above seasonal. 99 was our high. Average 98 and we are going to be seeing those near average temperatures as we head into the weekend, but 97 right now. So we were tracking a disturbance that pushed into the Pacific Northwest yesterday. That is slowly lifting, but actually bringing that wraparound clouds that we are seeing over the mountains this afternoon, continuing to see those westerly winds, but not quite as strong as this time yesterday. The strongest wind gusts are in Mojave at 23 miles per hour, but this time yesterday they were seeing nearing 40 mile per hour winds, but we are tracking yet another system that's going to be pushing into our north. So that's going to be bringing some colder air and some showers. Now, none of those showers are going to be making its way this far south. We are going to be staying nice and dry here in Kern County, but an increase in wind. So that's going to keep those temperatures near seasonal for yet another afternoon. And thankfully, air quality is going to stay in the moderate range with an AQI of 54 tomorrow. So that's a few points better than what we were seeing today. And as for those temperatures across the valley, while well, they are going to be holding on 
on to the upper 90s, but Lamont and Arvin will be briefly reaching that triple digit mark. Up in the Kern River Valley, temperatures are going to be in the low 90s and into Hatchby as well as down in Fraser Park in those 80s, 79 degrees as a high in Pine Mountain Club tomorrow. And our desert city is going to be warm as well, but looks like Ridgecrest is going to be the only spot across the desert that will be reaching those triple digits again just briefly most of the afternoon spent in the upper 90s. But as for temperatures as we head into your Friday and Saturday, really not going to be bad. We are tracking another system that's going to be pushing down, bringing that increase in winds as well as below seasonal temperatures. 95 degrees as a high on Friday, 96 on Saturday. And unfortunately, those July temperatures that we are used to will be rolling right back into the county beginning on Monday, continuing throughout the week. 104 as a high by next Friday. The Kern River Valley will be down to the low 90s for Friday and Saturday, then upper 90s as we head into next week. And we could actually be seeing some wraparound moisture, the potential to see some isolated thunderstorms in our mountain and desert cities beginning on Wednesday. Now that's something that we'll be tracking as we get closer. But for now, let's just talk about those below seasonal temperatures because mm -hmm. that's exactly what we like to hear. <laughs> yep, that's the Cliff Notes version right there. Yeah. Below <laughs> seasonal, we don't need to know anything no. else. And before the hot, 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 hot. Yeah, yes. Matata, no worries, guys. There you yeah, go. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, still ahead, getting an inside look at the solar industry. More on the program, educating students on energy-related careers when 23 ABC News at 6 returns. Beginning today, students in the Kern High School District will get their first taste of working in the solar industry. SunPower will host its fourth annual Kern Solar Academy designed to help high schoolers learn the ins and outs of the solar industry. More than 30 juniors and seniors will get a firsthand look at marketing business practices and solar electric projects during the academy. During the program, students are trained to market, design and finance a residential solar electric project and deliver their business proposal to a panel of judges. The academy will will run for five days at Bakersfield College. This moment of human kindness is sponsored by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. Well, coming together to help keep their community beautiful. That's what dozens of people did in Tatchby over the weekend in tonight's moment of Hello Human Kindness. Last weekend, the Tatchby Police Department holding their second community cleanup day, collecting more than 10 tons of debris in a neighborhood on the north side of Tatchby. On Saturday, nearly 22,000 pounds of bulky debris collected. Last month, two dozen volunteers joining the police department, collecting more than 16,000 pounds of debris from the same neighborhood. That can combined effort totaled more than 19 tons of trash appliances as well as bulky items that residents needed help removing from their properties. All part of the Neighborhood Improvement Project, which is a community oriented policing project designed to improve the quality of life for residents in Tehachapi neighborhoods. And we love highlighting Hello Human Kindness stories just like this. If you know someone who's done something kind for others, let us know on our website. Turn to 23.com. You can click on the Hello Human Kindness link there. You can submit your story idea and look at all of our past Hello Human Kindness stories. Are you feeling lucky? If you are, then buy yourself a scratch off Powerball or Mega Millions ticket because it is National Lottery Day. Did you know lotteries date all the way back to the 15th century? Back then, the money raised would help feed and clothe the poor and strengthen village defenses. In the U.S. today, lotteries are state owned and operated. Funds raised help the communities they serve and go toward things like schools, roads and government programs. Observe National Lottery Day by buying a ticket for yourself or someone else and you just might get lucky. It's Ooh. nice to have a day. It's even nicer to win yeah. the lottery. That's the part I still can't get. And then you'd celebrate <laughs> this day every year. It'd be oh, amazing. Would. That would yes. be awesome. Yeah. And it seems like a great day outside. Maybe you can go get that lottery ticket because, well, sunny skies right now and temperatures right on track with seasonal. More details coming up. Welcome back. A uh, cool down before, as I've said, uh, hot, 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 hot. Oh, I know, unfortunately, those July temperatures that we are all used to will be the case next week, but really not for at least the next several days. So 97 degrees right now here in Bakersfield. We are seeing mostly clear skies across the county. A few high thin clouds over Button Willow there, but we do have a warm evening ahead, but it's going to be nice because we are continuing to track westerly winds moving into the county. So that's what's keeping those temperatures near seasonal. So if you liked what you were 
feeling today? Well, it's going to be exactly the same tomorrow. Dry and mild conditions across Kern County, right near seasonal 99 as a high for your Thursday. But then we have a slight cool down on the way for your Friday and Saturday below seasonal in the mid 90s. And then we don't have to talk about Monday because that's still a ways away. But yes. the triple digits are looming. It's only a couple degrees difference, but it really Feels makes good. a difference. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. That's going to do it for us at six. We'll see you on the now at seven.